Hello there everybody and welcome to a new video for Age of Wonders 4. In this one I am starting out a new series of build guides. I'm going to try and make the most overpowered build for each and every culture to my own understanding currently. Today we are going to go for the high culture and we will follow up with more cultures there. Leave me in the comments down below which one you want to see first. We are going to go here over a build that utilizes all parts of the roster. We have a powerful empire and I'm using a dragon ruler, but you don't have to use a dragon ruler. This build works perfectly fine if you don't own the Dragon Dawn DLC. So let's start with the race and the culture. Timestamps are down below and let's go. So, cultural traits, I went for runesmiths and fabled hunters. Runesmiths is straightforwardly said, I think one of the most powerful social traits that you can pick up, mainly because it makes the very powerful unit enchantments more available. The 30% knowledge reduction are massive, also the cost reduction, but this is actually not that much of a big deal. As you see here, mana is really not the big issue for us, but it is really nice to have these uh, spells available really quickly. And Fabled Hunters, well, I pick this up for higher difficulty levels quite often because the AI cheats. When you're playing hard or brutal, the AI just has more resource than you. Fabled Hunters lets you counter that a little bit, because when you get double the amount of loot, you will really feel how much easier it is to build up your empire early on. And the bonus from that, while the rewards dwindle the later you the, the game grows, but since even Ancient Wonders and Infestation bonuses are doubled, it is not as if you wouldn't get anything later down the road. If you don't like that one, feel free to replace it with something like Chosen Uniters. You're really good at vassalizing people with this build, since you play pretty much every affinity. And you could also go for Adept Settlers if you want to go for a more expansionistic approach. I personally love Fabled Hunters for the given reasons, because it just gives you a nice kickstart, and that's really powerful. Body and Mind Traits, keen sighted for more accuracy on our archers and battle mages. We make good use of both types of units, so this is very powerful. An arcane focus, well, I went for it because it makes our battle mages more powerful, and we don't run that many battle mage enchantments in this build. You could alternatively go for Overwhelm Tactics, which is a really powerful thing. 20% more crit hit chance with a neighbor. What's not to like about that? I went for Arcane Focus because I wanted to have a reliable damage output on my battle mages. All right, so we got that. Let's talk tomes. When we go our, into our tome library, we see in the tier one roster all those tomes that give us unit enchantments of course i started out with cryomancy out of two reasons frost arrows and frost blades enchants your archers and your front line quite decently and it gives you more damage against frozen and slowed units really nice on its own it gives us access to a Battle Mage unit, that is a reliable freezer. I really like that about the White Witch a lot. And we also have a Battlefield spell, which allows us to freeze enemies very reliably right from the get-go. We don't need that much damage with this build. We are really fine with the strategic approach of battle casting. So you could also run Pyromancy as your first tome if you'd like to, or as your second tome. I just didn't go for that because the synergy isn't as good as I felt. The Pyromancer is a unit that we won't use that much, and it is a flat-out nuke, or oh, tier 3 mage is also a nuker, so I felt like I, I rather pick up the unit that has more of a strategic approach. Most parts of the Pyromancy tome are pretty much the same. We have the unit enchantments that do pretty much the same thing, but we have a Magma Spirit, which is also a battle mage. The Cryomancy Ghost is a skirmisher and that is in my opinion one of the better parts of this book so you can decide for yourself what you like more ignite and immolate are less strategical spells but with a harder hit so i think it really depends on your taste both tomes work just fine with the second tome i went for the tome of roots 
Here you could also go either pyro cryo or cryo roots, pyro roots, however you like to. The most important thing is that we're tier 1 tomes want to have unit enchantments for archers and melee units. So that's what the Tome of Roots provides. It has poison blades and poisoned arrows, which gives us a chance to poison the enemy. That's pretty good. It's a damage over time extra effect you will really like. And Healing Roots gives us a nice little healing spell. It's always pretty nice to have something that gives regeneration. Entwined Thrall is just the better skirmisher unit if you want to decide whether you want to have the Lesser Snow Spirit or the Entwined Thrall. He doesn't evolve, but he just has more punch if you ever need one. And beyond that, well, the Vine Prison currently is nerfed to death, so don't mind using that. So... Altogether, feel free to combine these tier 1 tomes as you see fit. I haven't found any bigger advantage or disadvantage with these combinations. I think Pyro Cryo could be really, really good if you really want to go for a Battle Mage heavier build. I'll leave it up to you. When we hit tier 2, the choices are a lot easier. Tome of Amplification, we totally want that for the Amplified Arrows, which turns our archers into absolute powerhouses. We want Frenzying Focus for our Battle Mages, which gives them strengthened stacks whenever they attack. This is so good, as it buffs also our supporters, which we feature quite some as well. Astral Blood, critical hit chance is amazing for spell casts. It amps up our already pretty high damage potential even more. The other three spells, Amplify Minds is really good for the high culture because you boast with high city stability levels. You can therefore crank out more knowledge. Chain Lightning and Amplification Pylon. Well, if you have the mana to spend it into Battlefield Magic, this combo is really amazing. Also, Resonance Fields gives you more combat casting potential and a little bit more mana. And if you want to go the Nuki way, Spell Amplification will do a really, really good job for you. The other tier 2 tome to pick up is Tome of Glades. This is such a synergistic tome for the high culture, and we're not going to pass this one. Several reasons. First off, we have upgrades for our units. Our entire tier 1 roster gets upgraded by that one. The tier 1 archer we were using will get replaced by the Glade Runner, which is just a better version of the tier 1 unit. The Entwined Protector will replace our tier 1 shield units, just being a better version of that one. And on top of that, we gain Aspect of Root, which allows our spearmen and our shield units to heal themselves and enter defense mode. This boosts your tier 2 spear dudes by a lot. And these three things are so massively synergistic for your roster, because now when you hit that part, you can just start upgrading your roster, and that's really, really good. And Leaf Skin is a plus one magic resistance that you just get for free. On top of that, you walk faster through forests and have stealth there. Array, I guess. Create Forest is nice if you choose some special province improvements that rely heavily on forests. If you have some with this build, you can make good use out of that too, if you want to. So, if you go for a foresty way, Forest Warden is really, really powerful as it boosts your armies massively. And, well, Sacred Matter is not much to talk about. When we hit Tier 3, the next parts to pick up are Tome of Cycles. We pick that up mostly for really just two parts, but they synergize with our build massively. Projectiles of Decay, another plus two to damage, and Decaying. Decaying is not only a damage over time that can be stacked together with poison, it also denies the enemy's ability to regain hit points. This is the final part of your ranged dominance in this build, as it supports not only your archers, but also your battle mages and, uh, and support units massive piece. That's alone worth picking up the tome. But the Druid of the Cycle is actually really good for this build too, because he has a really powerful attack, he can execute units and then afterwards resurrect units. That's really cool if it uh, works out. And he can awaken units as well, as every supporter in your roster can. It's tier 4, it costs Imperium, but hey, it's a very powerful supporter. The other parts of the tome, well... They aren't too much to talk about. Diffuse Health is a nice little Healy spell. 
parting gifts it's nice to have a little bit of a health boost if somebody dies around you and cycle of seasons is just a nice defense tool there's nothing too special about these but these two spells projectiles of decay and the root of the cycle are actually worth that book believe it or not try it out and you will tome of pandemonium though is something we cannot pass by at this point anymore we have so many negative statuses that Vassals of Chaos is just a free 30% damage boost for pretty much all of our units. It's insane. And Havoc Magic is just giving your battle mages and supporters that little edge that makes them not the most damage heavy part of your roster, but oh so versatile because, you know, you never know what will spring out of the box, but it will be surely good. Mass Hysteria is a nice crowd control tool, and Inside Revolution gives you the ability to just spawn new infestations. That's pretty nice if you run Fabled Hunters. And the Chaos Eater, well, if you need another battle mage on the front line, go crazy. He's there, and he's highly synergistic with this build, because your archers will rain so many statuses on the enemy down, as will your, the rest of your roster. It's amazing. So the fun part is here, when you hit these tomes, it is actually worth backtracking, as I did here. So if you just want to dominate the map military-wise, don't go for the tier 4 tomes. They aren't actually that good for your build. Just pick up all the other tomes out there that will boost up your, your units further. Be it Tome of Evocation for more nasty battle mages and more nasty frontliners or be it tome of enchantment for better um range on your archers whatever you can go for it it doesn't cost you much in terms of research and will make you military wise much more powerful than the other tier four tomes that you can pick up so if you want to pick Min Maxi, there's only one tier 4 tome that actually really, really was um, a big competition to the nature ones, and that's the Tome of the Crucible, mostly because of Meteor Arrows, which will make your archers even more insane, but the rest of the tools in here aren't that good. Mostly, you will enjoy the nature tier 4 tomes. These provide with Tome of Paradise, an amazing tool to boost the morale in your army. That's more critical hits, more damage at the end of the day, more resilience for your army in form of Gaia's Chosen turns your units into plants. On top of that, it doesn't say that. You really need to update that tooltip. But uh, yeah, status resistance and HP are just massive. And the other goodies here, Fortress of Vines makes your cities more resilient. Nature's Bounty gives you a nice HP bonus yet again. And Enchanted Bloom is for your cities if you want to be grassland heavy. And Blessing of Paradise, it's so good for the high culture because high city stability cranks out insane profits out of your cities. Tome of Nature's Wrath, I really love this one because Devolve is super powerful. You have a 90% chance to just destroy any high tier unit of the enemy into a tier 1 animal unit. If not, you get to stun somebody. It's just a win-win. Awakened Instincts is also pretty nifty. Just, well, the Berserk can backfire if you place it wrong, but I, I had good times with that one. Destructive Regrowth gives you... Well, more forests, and Awaken the for a Forest is good for throwaway army creation, and Horned God is just a nice tier 5 unit for this build. It is not that super impressive, but it creates throwaway units via Animate Flora, which is really cool, and he can also heal your units via ranged attacks, but until the vines get fixed, he's a pretty underwhelming fella, because his nuke isn't uh, nearly as impressive as it was. Tome of the Goddess of Nature is your endpoint. You will gain not too much out of that. We don't go for cavalry here. Just the Mass Rejuvenation is a really massive sales point because you can heal your entire army. You don't need all the other parts here. It's just good enough <laughs> on, on its own. So I uh, went over Inspiring Icon here. Pick that up for your heroes if you can. Support skills are pretty good for this build in general. 
and nature's avenger is sadly something you won't make too much use out of this because you are not rocking too much ah sorry you can use it because you are plants out of uh, gaia's chosen never mind me this is also stupidly powerful because five strengthened for all the plants around you <laughs> here we go so let's talk about the military aspects so first off we're going to go over what we can do early on your early game roster will consist mostly out of dusk hunters a couple of dawn defenders white witches and if you Rush it well, some sun priests and daylight spears, and that's all you need to conquer the world. The fun part is, as soon as you have some awakening skills, feel free to uh, pick up awakening skills for all of your heroes. I really feel like that's a must-have for this culture. You can just crank out the damage to an insane level. Your archers have super high range, your dawn defenders are really resilient with the awakening alone and the daylight spears dish out really good damage as do the dawn defenders due to all the unit enchantments we're rocking the sun priests give you even more awakening abilities and a really strong burst heal if ever the need arises believe me you won't need that much more after you hit the second tier one tome most things are already killable for your armies once you hit tome of amplification you basically already can totally attack everybody who, who you want because you deal aoe with your tier one archers as soon as you can pick up the glade runners in the form of the glades you will start to replace your dusk hunters bit by bit with these guys don't rush this i actually often wait until i lose dusk hunters via auto resolve and then just start filling them up it's pretty nice same thing you can do with your dawn defenders when they start dying just summon a entwined protector on top of them because they are just the better version of what we had before there is no reason to return back to the tier one units except for urgency when you need fresh units quite badly because somebody's attacking you these guys are powerful but they are not as powerful as the tier three pendants um counterparts that we got there glade runner also has trekkers mark which is amazing if you ever run into somebody who's giving you a hard time like a hero with high evasion and everything glade runners make short work out of that also once you get access to tier three units the awakener basically can Totally replace the white witch feel free to leave a white witch or two in your rosters for strategical freezes but the damage output of a white witch in comparison to a to the awakener is just not the same it is very very cool to have the white witches right from the get-go because their strategic element is giving you the edge against the ai in the early game so massively but the awakener with the exposing light is much more powerful it's a one hex radius nuke that lowers the enemy defenses and it's just that good also like the name implies the awakeners have the ability to awaken other units so they come with a built-in utility and that's something the white witches don't offer either and let's put it down like that with the high culture you are massively hungry for every source of awakening because awakening is not only activating dormant traits it gives you plus four damage on your units so this is why this build is by the way so overpowered because the moment you hit two tier one tomes you have plus four via unit enchantments on your damage plus four via awakening that's eight damage more per attack <laughs> that's why it's so insane to stop these guys right so from that point on if you want to replace the sun priests with druids of the cycle i would strongly advise you not to the druid of the cycle doesn't replace the sun priest he's complimenting him because sun priests are the only people in your standard roster featuring twin awakening you shouldn't really uh, um optimize them out of your build sun priests have a really really good place here also the druid of the cycle has no direct heal he needs to kill somebody before he can restart the cycle 
So this ability can only be used after life from uh, death has been triggered. And uh, if I remember correctly, this is exactly here, when this unit kills another. So you need to have a takedown with these guys to actually start healing. And therefore, keep the Sun Priests. They are really, really useful for you. All right, so that's been the military part. It's really straightforward. I, I, I cannot uh, say how easy it feels with these guys. So my banners, to give you an impression, look a bit like this. So I got one hero, one shield, two battle mages, a supporter, and an archer. Here we have more archers and uh, no battle mages on that banner. And here we didn't hit that one. Here we have, again, a bit, little bit of everything with the spearmen in between. So if you want to optimize it a little bit, mix a tad bit more battle mages into that one. It's I am a little bit heavy on archers here, but that just happened. All right, let's talk strategy. It is actually really simple. If you go for a dragon ruler like I did here, you can use the dragon to just clear out the area around you with just the dragon alone. It's quite easy to get to that point and you should or could hire yourself a hero before your second city and just pick up the starting units and explore in opposite directions. Here, for example, my dragon went south and my regular army went north. And so I leveled up the hero and the dragon at the same time while pilfering 30 many resource nodes and that is your early game. It is very easy to dominate the early game because basically, as long as your frontliners haven't died, you just need to add more Dusk Hunters. My standard early game rosters really only have usually two Dawn Defenders, a Hero, and then I fill up with Dusk Hunters, Sun Priests, and uh, I end up with a fairly unhealthy relation to 50 to 60 person ranged units and 50 to 40 person melee units you can totally go for a heavier bias with uh, ranged units with this build easily you just have to find out for yourself how you can keep the situation under control and since you are with this build totally dominant right from the get-go i strongly advise you to play very expansionistic just settle down wherever you want to since you have if you play with a dragon the ability to start into two directions it's massive if you don't have a dragon you just can do the same just a little bit delayed because you can conquer with a army of six and the hero a lot of things with this build either way you really, really should get yourself as many cities as quick as you can, be it either by founding them yourself or just conquering free cities around you. I'll leave that up to you. The wonderful part about this build is you also have a massive access to different affinities. Chaos is pretty much the only one you don't have. A Chaos and Astral are the two affinities we only have minor access to. I also picked up Cryomancy, by the way, as my first tome, because this way you have Knowledge Extraction available very, very early on. If you choose Pyromancy, you have more Chaos. I personally prefer Shadow any day, time of day over Chaos, and that's why I also went for Cryomancy even if the elemental spirit is a little bit less impressive. Also, the other shadow perks are so good. I personally love Court of Whispers for extra whispering stones in combination with all seeing. It's a nice knowledge bonus because you can grab yourself a whispering stone here, a whispering stone there, a whispering stone there. And uh, before you know it, you have six, the ability to generate 60 knowledge just by having contact to free cities. So, the Materium part of the build, Military Engineering makes it a lot easier to found outposts right next to Magic Materials or Wonders, whatever you want to claim. Master Masons makes your cities less costly, and Arcane Artisans is just the other thing that you can pick up here. With this build, I picked up the Materium 
affinity via my dragon, by the way, if you are wondering. If you don't have a dragon, you will have only runesmiths alone, so you will probably end at master masons and arcane artisans, and the other ones will be not available to you. Arcane artisans, they're alone for that one. Build mines, not quarries. Since this thing is available, mines have become so much more powerful when you play Materium. After that, I love Metropolitan Society because high culture cities tend to be expansionistic and, well, when we go further down the road, you most likely won't get too far here. Where you will be very far down the road is nature. So you can have cities very fast, a very fast expansionistic thing, fast healing in your borders. Spirit Wolf is really good for your early aggressive game if you want to go down that way. Expert Sailors is really nice for making rivers not so much of a barrier. Believe me, it is massive how much time you save with that one. And Expensive Reach, again, really nice for the high culture's way of expanding like a madman. So, if you want to go for the wild expansion, you can also have units. I don't think this is very good for this build because we don't have massive synergy with animals, so I'd not recommend it here. Rather, go for Rite of Awakening for extra knowledge and Druidic Care for insane mana provi uh, providence, or however you want to call it. So, yeah, the other parts here, we can go wherever we want to with these, but that's the most impactful. Overall, this build can therefore win every way. You can either annihilate the AI at every front, you can win with a magic victory because you can totally have powerful cities here. You have all the tools to build insanely powerful cities, just uh, keep an eye out on the city stability. And you could also go, yeah, each direction is playable for this build. That's what I'm personally most uh, satisfied with. So, as a last point before I end this video, you can choose your alignment to your own liking. If you make it to pure good, the extra city stability is amazing. Apart from that, well, I gotta say, neutral is really a powerful all-rounder because it rewards you massively for high city stability and this nature build can provide. So, try this one out if you haven't already uh, did something like that. I haven't found much more optimization points here. I... I'm really open for um, your guys' opinions here, because I'm not convinced that I really used every little min-maxing point available. I'm pretty sure I missed out something. Well, let me know if you guys know. Have a wonderful day. Leave a thumbs up. Leave a subscription. I'd be delighted if you did so. And if you want to see more videos like these, there's an entire playlist and the link that is in the description box below. Have a wonderful day, and see you soon.